Hello, so this is just a short video to show you a tutorial, it's not really a tutorial, it's a walkthrough, um, uh, to show you my Mickey Minnie Mouse uh, clock that looks a little bit like a vinyl record. I've been making these vinyl record clocks with Beatles themes and, and various other things with images that I downloaded from the net, but this one you can make in Design Space. This is a Design Space Disney Mickey Mouse Minnie Mouse image, um, which if you don't already have, um, it doesn't cost that much to, to buy, um, to use for this clock. And uh, it's very simple to put together, which is why I've not put it together on video. It's basically five layers, um, two layers of black Cricut craft board at the front, though you could use cardstock. And then there's a, a red layer. Um, I used Cricut uh, metallic craft board, metal craft board. Um, I've got a layer of grey cardstock there, and then at the back there are two layers of um, chipboard style stuff. Actually, mine is called presentation board or art board uh, from Crescent, and it comes in 11 by 14 pack that I get from my art shop. Um, but you could use Cricut's own chipboard, although it wouldn't be black on the back. So you could either uh, paint it black, I suppose, or put a layer of cardstock over the back. Um, um, and then you might find the edges don't look black either but you could use various things or you could even if you don't have an explore because I cut a uh, rather a maker because I cut mine out with a maker um, you could use uh, Cricut black craft board again and layer it up probably put a couple of extra layers um, to give it more um, sturdiness and, and weight but you can also um, use graphics medium chipboard that you get from Amazon. I've used that before on an explore and use the deep cut blade and especially this fairly simple shape um, just has a, a square hole in the middle and it's round otherwise would cut out with your explore using as I say the deep cut blade. Um, it might need to be put through a couple of times to make sure it, it actually cuts right through. But I have done that before on previous vinyl record style clocks. So, um, I have, as you can see just about there, I have made grooves on mine with my debossing tool in my maker. I think you could probably use a scoring wheel or an engraving tool in your maker. I don't think that the um, scoring tool um, with the Explore would probably work because it's probably not deep enough. But if you have an Explore, uh, you could leave these grooves off. Um, it, I think it would look just as nice really without them. Um, it was just a bit of detail that I wanted to add because I have the debossing tool and I thought I'd use it. Just one tip though, if you do use a debossing tool and you use um, black craft board like I did, when you put it on your mat and you deboss these circles round and round and round, it sticks your mat, sticks your craft board to your mat very firmly. So don't put it on a sticky mat. Use a, a light grip mat or a mat that you've, that's not got so sticky now. Um, because when you come to peel it off, it, it really sticks and it, and it will bend when you try to get it off. So that's what I found. My uh, clock hands are um, a little clock movement that I got from AliExpress. Very, very inexpensive. Um, but you could just as easily use a clock movement from Hobby Lobby or Michaels or Joann's or... Walmart, or wherever, wherever you get, the, or Amazon probably, wherever you get clock movements from. But I will put a, a link to this particular one if I can find it later. So you've got, this part at the top is print and cut. Um, I just used a um, cardstock. I printed and cut 
I didn't bother to cut all these layers out as it, I thought it looked fine just as it was, printed and cut, um, and then stuck to several layers of, um, I used craft board to make, give it more sturdiness and weight. Um, and that's what I did with that. But you'll see that is all included in the pattern when you come to use it or file. Um, what else do I want to tell you? When you get to the back now, this square hole is where you put your clock and it keeps it from moving around. So that's quite a good idea. There are two holes on the back layer um, that is where I put the wire through, which is just red wire that I bought from Dollar Tree. And then I stuck it to the layer underneath with two pieces of tape and then I glued the whole thing together, sandwiched it together. Um, but if your clock has got one of these, um, the, the, you can use this to um, put it on the wall instead if you want to. You don't have to have the wire. And you'll also notice these, these sort of little spacers. I made these from just scrap pieces of chipboard that I had left at the end, several of them, cut them out by hand, and I laid them up to reach the height of the clock. And the idea of that is when you put it on the wall and hang it up, sometimes you'll find it will wobble a bit um, because of the height of the clock. So I put the spacers on and it stabilizes it a bit. And that's what I think is quite a good idea to do. So I think I've told you, oh, no, one last thing. When you come to glue all your layers together, you might want to use some clips while they're gluing to make sure they all stay together firmly while the glue is setting, and that's what I did. Um, I've got various clips, actually. These ones are from Dollar Tree, but I've got other kinds, and I just use those too. And then it ends up just like that, and hangs on the wall, and makes a very attractive clock, I think. Anyway, so that's goodbye from me, and as I say, I'll put a list of materials in the description beneath this video, just to remind you what I used. Bye.